we talked about simple volumes. A simple volume just simply means I have some space consumed from a single hard drive. So everything's going to be on the single hard drive, which is assigned to a, a single physical disk. It doesn't have to encompass the entire hard drive, just a portion, but a lot of times on a Windows 7 machine, you just say, yeah, go ahead and take the entire drive. Now, simple volumes are just that. They're simple. And if it says volume, that means it is a dynamic disk. Remember, partitions are basic disks, and volumes are dynamic disks. Questions and answers. Go over to the Q&A area. How many primary partitions can I have on a physical drive? Go ahead and chat it in. The maximum number of primary partitions that I can configure. And, uh, you know, like I said, this dates back a long time ago. Um, you can have up to four. Very good. Most people uh, was able to chat that in. You can have up to four primary partitions. Or I can have up to three and then one extended. Or I can have, you know, one primary and then one extended. You know, you can mix and match. But no more than a total of four primaries or three primaries and then one extended. So let's go into a spanned volume. A span volume, it's like, um, well, it's like one of those uh, water features. You ever seen those where they have a pot? And in this pot, it's got a little spout. So when this pot fills up, it flows over to the next pot. When that pot fills up, it flows over the next pot, so on and so on and so on. And that's what a span volume does. It doesn't provide you with any fault tolerance or actually any advantage in speed. Instead, it just makes the drive bigger. So this will all appear to be, for example, the D drive. And when this drive fills, it spills over to here. When this one fills, it spills over to here, so on and so on. And another advantage of a span drive is these little chunks that I'm taking from different physical drives, they don't have to be the same size. So this could be 150 gig, this could be 27 meg, this can be 300 gig, this could be 4 gig, and it just adds them all together. But again, it's not fault tolerant, but if you happen to lose, for example, this drive, the only information you're going to lose is the stuff that's on that drive. I mean, that could be kind of important, but you should be able to still read the information on the other drives. It'll give you an error. Say, hey, our span set's got missing members and such and such. You can break the span set and then just go into the drives and read the information. So um, this is just to give you more space. So if you're doing all these Word documents or high-end graphics and you're just running out of space, a span volume can work for you. And that's over on page 98. Another one that we have is actually a stripe volume. And a stripe volume is different because what it does is it writes to all of the drives at the same time. So Here's my little block of data that I want to store, and it stripes it across all three drives. So now I have a little chunk here, and a little chunk here, and a little chunk here. The advantage of a stripe set is it's really fast, because I can write to multiple drives at the same time, and I can read from multiple drives at the same time. You see a lot of stripe sets for things like video capture or video playback, because it is just that fast. Very, very quick. The problem with stripe sets, though, is it's fault intolerant. If I lose one drive, I can't access any of this because the, the information is striped across it. So stripe volumes are very fault intolerant, but they are very fast. Something else to realize that a stripe set, the pieces have to be about the same size. Now, you don't have to go through and take all the entire available blank space. So for example, let's say that I have 10 gig available here, I have 20 gig available here, and I have 5 gig available here. What I can do is I can take all 5 gig from this drive, and then 5 gig from here, and then 5 gig from here. Uh-oh, that's only 15 gig. Heck, I got more just by taking this one drive. Well, that's OK. Uh, realize that when you're doing stripe sets, it's between 2 and 32 drives that you can use. You don't have to use all the drives, but you can go anywhere from 2 to 32. So in this uh, particular scenario, what would be the largest stripe drive that I could configure? The largest stripe drive that I could configure uh, with a 5, 10, and a 20? Well, I'm not going to take this drive. I'm just going to use these two. But because this one's only 10, well, I can do 20 gig. <laughs> so not a whole lot of advantage. 
Uh, in the exam, what you may see is they'll get a little tricksy on you. They'll say 20, 20, and 10. And they're hoping you pick 30. They're hoping you pick a 10 gigabyte slice off of each one. But no, what I'll do is I'll take 20 gig from here and 20 gig from there, and I will have a 40 gig stripe set. But it is very fault intolerant. Um, stripe volumes are quick, but heaven forbid if you lose data, make sure you have backups.